Hello and welcome back. Okay, the ratio of saying um of asking to the ones who come back to say thank you is always um nine is to one. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to you know my channel. Yeah, my name is Adora. Just in case this is your first time of seeing me. Hello. And if this isn't your first time, thank you so much. Please do make sure to subscribe and press the notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about the impact of social media on Heaven's, Heaven's Gratitude Bank. Right? Like, growing up, I was made to know that, you know, our gratitude is bankable. Our prayers are bankable in heaven. Our supplication intercession even our tears are bankable you know that's like a mental picture i always keep your giving is bankable and what are banks banks are like where you go to keep money here on earth right keep um treasures and even keep your documents so it's for safekeeping and a lot of times i when i reflect on the world as it is today and social media as it has come to become part of our lives and our daily lives like it, it it's i can't help but wonder the impact of social media on heaven's gratitude bank so we're taught in the scriptures that we should always be you know thankful the bible says in philippians over since right that we should be anxious for nothing but in every situ situation by prayer and supplication make your request known unto god right that's like a mantra we all live by you know we'll let's say be anxious for nothing be anxious for nothing but in today's world we find out that we are anxious for a lot of things a lot of us didn't even know that our standard of living was different until there was social media a lot of us didn't even know that you know so many things like a lot of us felt a lot of us were more content till we stumbled upon social media and then social media has raised a world of comparison it has raised the world of you know so many things to compare your life with that sometimes it's 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 become toxic it's become it's draining the life out of us and it's draining gratitude from our hearts from our lips so a lot of times we wallow in just wanting more wanting more wanting more and we're not even grateful for what we have already so it's just i just shudder to think that heaven's gratitude bank is being depleted every single day because people do not necessarily think that their life is is enough that what god has already given them is enough but remember a living dog is better than a dead lion. So once there is life, there is hope. And if God has given us the ability and the opportunity to be alive in the land of the living, then there's always hope for a better tomorrow. But whilst we are living in our today, it is important that we are grateful for what God has already made provision for as we. I'm not a fan of complacency or stagnation or, you know, like that's not what I'm preaching. What I'm just saying is, Comparing your life with someone else's life out there just because they put a few filters, you know, made an effort, you know, put um, some nice things in the background as they made their videos. Remember, people show you, what people show you on social media is what they choose to show you. A lot of people are showing you the best part of their day. A lot of people are showing you the best part of their lives. So when you come to couple social media pages, like social media pages that like it's focused on couples and you know relationships and stuff they are showing you the best part of their relationship nobody is necessarily showing you when they are not in good terms or when things are not going as well you know so if, if a social media page is all about money and finances and success they are telling you the best part of their story they are not necessarily telling you the part of the story that you know is not the beautiful one like everybody wants to tell the best part of their life you know 
and if regardless of what even when we talk about hair hair um influencers and all social media pages that are focused on hair and all of that a lot of times they seem to appear so voluminous and it's a hack actually you know in the hair care world that when you want your hair to appear like it's everywhere once you're on a like like this <laughs> in front of a camera all you need to do is to push your hair to the side both sides and it just appears like your hair is everywhere what you don't see is the fact that their back is flat for, for the most part so everybody tries to project the best part of themselves and i like the scripture in philippians 4 verse 11 to 12 where paul was talking about how you know he was talking to the philippian church and he was saying that he has learned to be content in every situation in plenty and in nothing like he has learned to just you know be in every circumstance to be content you know he said not that i'm speaking of being in need for i have learned in whatever situation i am to be content i know how to be brought low and i know how to abound and in every and any circumstance i have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need and you know this the scripture goes on and on but what is it trying to tell us that in whatever situation we find ourselves just be content the art of contentment is such like is such an important trait in this day and age that anybody that has it is going to excel in whatever endeavor they have because even on your journey to success even on your journey to where you're going to there is it's always there's always going to be someone who has gone ahead of you there's always going to be someone who seemingly seems to be doing what you're doing better already there's always going to be someone that seems to have that have it that seems to have it all together i was talking to my friend yesterday we we're talking about a certain thing and then i was like i were exchanging voice notes and just talking about something but i re remember mentioning to her that it might seem like i have it all together but i really don't and then when she responded on her own voice, so she was like, Adora, you're actually one of the people that I think that has it all together. So every day, the Lord is trying to let me know that that point you are in, that you think that you haven't even arrived, is someone else's destination, is someone else's dream, is someone else's, you know, where they desire to be. And you're there feeling all discontented and wanting more and wanting more and more. And there's really nothing wrong with wanting more. It's just the posture of our hearts whilst wanting more is very important. There's really nothing wrong with desiring the best things of life or desiring to grow or desiring to know more or desiring to have more. But your motive and the posture of your heart whilst doing that is more important than the desire to have all of that. It could be in ministry. You want to touch more lives. You want to have more people in your in your that you have influence over but the motive and the 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 posture of our heart in that desire in that phase of desire is more important than you know wanting to do it because outwardly it seems like oh it's a good thing i want to have more more members in my church i want to do all of that and which is really good so winning is you know the bible says here that we next soul is wise but what is the motive of our heart whilst wanting the next thing what is the motive of our, heart, of our heart whilst desiring change, desiring growth, desiring all of that? It would actually, you know, I was listening to someone who was talking about patience and long suffering. And she said, one is waiting, then the other one is the attitude while waiting. And it made so much sense because it's not enough to do, to wait. It's important to have the right attitude whilst waiting. So, Paul was saying, I've learned in every situation to be content. If I have a lot, thanks be to God. If I don't have a lot, thanks be to God. Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 5 verse 16 says, Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ for us. So, these scriptures are so profound and yet we are not doing it because we can spend our entire day sulking that's why the rate of depression and anxiety and suicide and all of all the evil that comes with mental health issues are just on the rise and you know 
with young generation, rituals, mothers, a lot of things. People just wanting more and more and more and more. If we apply this scripture in Thessalonians, which is rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Even when we don't have, even when we seemingly haven't hit that goal, even when we seemingly haven't gotten that thing we desire, we would learn to rejoice always. We will learn to pray without ceasing. We will learn to give thanks to God. So it is no wonder that since we now have access into people's lives, because the way I see it is, I mean, all these celebrities have been around for so long, but we didn't know what their lives looked like. We didn't know what their homes looked like. We didn't know what their houses looked like. We didn't know what their dynamic was like. We didn't see them every single day till social media came into play, till tech and devices came into play. And then we now, everybody now puts a camera in front of them and they want to take a picture, a selfie for the day, you know, like a, a house tour, a travel tour, you know, come with me as I travel the world. And then all the different things that is making sense on social media to people, right? And then you just look at your little life and you're like wondering, oh my God, like I haven't traveled the world. My house doesn't look like this. Uh, my face, my skin doesn't look like this. The next one is a skincare world. It's so funny. Like, uh, it, oh my God, if whatever you pay attention to gets your attention really and can control how you feel, right? I've never really been anyone that cares about my skin. Not like I don't care about my skin, like I don't really focus on how my skin looks. And then this skincare world <laughs> comes into play. And I still didn't care. I still didn't care. Like for the most part, I felt like God blessed me with a good enough skin. So I still didn't care. I was just doing the barest minimum. But for some reason, I decided, oh, like I want to do skincare. And there's a saying that if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Don't try to fix it. So I said I wanted to do skincare and I delved into skincare, bought stuff, spent a ton of money only for the skincare not to be skinny. My skin wasn't skinny during the, the seasons of using all of that. And I'm like, oh my God, like, and then I realized, I remember being very, you know, every day I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Every day I go to the mirror to check, is the acne going down? Is inflammation going down? Is this, 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 all the problem that the skincare brought. And I have a new set of problem because why? I decided that something that wasn't broken needed to be fixed. What influenced my decision to do that social media? So we need to guard our heart, guard our eye gates, guard our ear gates, and guard like our gratitude gate, like guard it to everything, like protect thanksgiving with everything in you. In every situation, there's something, there's an attitude my husband always has, like I'll just always catch him in the middle, in mid, in mid stance, like he'll just say, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Maybe something good has happened to him at the time, but I, all the days I've known him, he does that, he says that a lot. And one day, the Holy Spirit was telling me, like you would always find a reason to be unhappy, Sadly enough, you will. Because there's always a reason to be unhappy. So you're going to have to choose whether you're going to be unhappy or happy. Because, oh, this thing is not the way it's supposed to be. You're not happy. Um, the, the, the house is scattered. You're not happy. The children are, you're not happy. All of that. You know, there's always going to be reasons to be unhappy. So the earlier you start to make a conscious choice and a conscious effort to choose happiness, I missed whatever is going on, the better for you. So today, there are so many scriptures I wanted to reference. The book of Psalms is full of so many, you know, thank, thanksgiving um, songs and stuff. Psalm 107, 1 to 3 said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from trouble. When you have to sit down and count your blessings, there's a song I love so much. It said, our lives are full of miracles. So many countless little miracles all around. One, two, three, four. I can't even count them all. There's a, so, a saying that says, if you count your blessings, it's a song too, and name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. It is so important to just find little things along the line to just say, Thank you, Jesus, for thank you. Let us stop rob robbing heaven of its gratitude. Let us stop, you know, disengaging the angels that collect gratitude. 
there's this uh, analogy my my pastors always make. They said that the angels are, are in the prayer line are always very overworked and busy and stressed out. But the angels in the gratitude room are always chilling and playing chess. Why? Because people are constantly bugging heaven with their needs and never coming back to say thank you. The ratio of saying um of asking to the ones who come back to say thank you is always um, nine is to one as illustrated by the ten lepers who Jesus healed only one came back to say thank you to Jesus right so let's change the narrative today let us be those ones let us be that one that goes back to say thank you Jesus keep a gratitude jar document your journey there was a day I wanted to have a bath and I almost slipped in the tub and I'm like God, as it was this, I was this close to maybe breaking up, breaking everything in my body. That's a good place to start to say, thank you, Jesus, for life. I mean, if that had happened, I'll probably not be here today because I'll be in so much pain, probably casted up in the hospital or something. There have been so many times that God has actually interrupted my life and saved me from so many seemingly deadly situations that would have been the end of me or end of, or maybe a fatal situation or something and God has interrupted the flow of things and brought intervention and saved me at that time so I want to remember those little things I want to remember the fact that God gives me healthy children every single day we don't have to live in the hospital I've never had to stay there you know like he just makes I and my husband healthy everybody in my house is healthy we are not spending a ton of money on medical care we just do the barest minimum. I want to thank God that even in a recession that we are living in, in, in abundance. I want to thank God for little things, a thriving business, you know, like even the little things, glowing skin, healthy body, whatever. Eyes that can see, hands that can hold, and let heaven get a, like, a return on their investment for giving you life today. I'll see you on our next video and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Adora signing off. Bye.